Ain't no Taco Bell here. We are doing us up some quesadillas right off the grill. And I'm talking about a marinated chicken that is so good and tender and a smoky New York strip that we're going to lay in there with so much goodness of cheese. Come on, you don't need a drive up window on this deal. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by for some more cowboy cooking. You have tuned in to the right channel you have, because what are we gonna do? We are gonna de-stress here. We are gonna have a good time. We are gonna be laid back. We are gonna dance. We are gonna dine. But what are we gonna do today? Some quesadillas. I nearly said fajitas. <laughs> But today we doing us some quesadillas and what are we gonna do? Right over here on the grill where you can bring out the most flavor. Now for some of y'all chicken fans who might be feeling a little foul, huh, we're gonna have some of that too, but we're gonna put some beef in there as well. What are we using? Some New York strip steak. We have let that stuff set and we have got it seasoned well. Whew, it is gonna be good and we are gonna cover that thing up with some cheese. I mean, it's gonna be thick and you are gonna love it. But before we go any further and before y'all try to go away, I'm gonna tell you right now, we have got a giveaway. Yes, we have. Look right over there. Faith Family and the Feast Cookbook, some seasoning, one of them Yeti cups, a spatula, a skillet lid holder, and some of that beloved stuff. What is it? The most sacred jar of relish. Be sure and stick around now to where you can find out how you can be entered in that giveaway and maybe you'll win. Now folks, we got the old Hasty Bake fired up over and I got her loaded up with some hardwood lump oak for today. Now some of you be telling me, I don't know where to get it. You can get that stuff at Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, Sporting Goods stores, a lot of them got it. Make sure that's what you're using if you ain't just using regular wood. I want you to get off of them briquettes. <laughs> they not good for you. But we always got to remember that grill has got to be hot and it has got to be clean. Now I'm going to take you back down the trip to old memory lane and what are we talking about? The onion. Yeah, you've seen me use it many times, but folks on a ranch, I would see them old timers come by and they would ask me, hey Cookie, you got an onion? And I'd say, I got plenty of onions. I said, are you cra craving an onion right after breakfast? No, I need to season my knife before we go and cut them calves. They won't bleed near as bad if you'll run your knife through an onion. And they would just slice that thing. They'd take off. I said, you don't want the onion? No, I just needed to run that knife through there. That's an old tale that them old ranchers always told me all the time, but a lot of them old men swore by it. But something else that onion is good for, folks, what is it besides eating, cleaning, and seasoning a grill? Yeah, it is a great thing. And you'd be saying to yourself, well, you're wasting part of that onion. No, when you get through, we'll just come back and cut that part off that we seasoned the grill with, throw the rest of it on there. Hey, I love a grilled onion. So let's clean it and let's get it ready to go. Well, you've seen that onion done a good job it is, and it don't take things long to make that shine up. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna give it a little greasing, especially when I'm just cooking some chicken. <music> which we are today. If it's just beef, I just have done that with that onion, never mess with it again, because that onion will give you a good little cleaning, plus a good little seasoning on there as you go. So let's talk about this chicken. Today we're using three big old chicken breasts, we are. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take them out of that there package they come in, put them in a, one of them gallon freezer bags, lay them on that cutting board, whoppo! Many times with that husband training rolling pin, because have you ever seen that chicken that ain't got no skin on it, which this don't, it has a membrane, shiny. You can see it if you look at it. And when you hit it with that rolling pin, not only are we getting it thinner to where it cooks faster, but when you break that membrane down, it accepts seasoning so much better. So get them all done that way and then just put them over. Do not cross contaminate. Put things one side to the other. Put you something over your cutting board like you see me do, but let's keep it germ free, yes. So let's talk about this marinade for this chicken. You see me in a mixing bowl. First thing we did was get us some olive oil in there. And then we're going to put us some of them adobo peppers in there. But a thing you need to remember, put that honey in there. Not just does it bring a little sweetness out, but it's going to help caramelize that chicken as it begins to cook and give us a better crust. Got some cumin in there for that good Mexican flavor. But remember, mix that up really well. Put it in that baggie. Rub it all around that chicken. Slap it in the ice box, okay? because we need to let that chicken set in that marinade at least six hours, folks. Now, I would prefer you let it set 
overnight. That flavor just comes all in there together the longer you can let it sit and it's so good. So let's talk about them New York strips for the beef quesadilla. Can we hear a hey man for the beef? Yes, beef is what it is. Yes, beef, beef, it's what's for dinner. Me and the oh, big, yep, yep. me and the big and Duke, we think it's a winner. So what do you do? You eat beef for dinner. So. Rhymes. New York strip. I really love them to make this dish if you're having a steak fajita. Now, a lot of times they're gonna use a flank or a skirt. Some of them use the back side of that old brisket where you get that old coarse cut. Now, remember if you're using flank or skirt, I would let this set at least six to eight hours. For these New York strips, we season them. Hey, y'all seen me do it so many times. Lime juice, rub it in really well, both sides. Mesquite seasoning, rub it in really well. Don't think you're over seasoning. Get it on there good, folks, because there is a mistake for steak cooking. Y'all remember what it is? Overcooked, under seasoned. So make sure you get that. We're gonna let them set at least four. These steaks can come out and come to room temperature about 30 minutes ahead of time. Not that foul, huh? Just drag him out of the ice box when you get ready to throw him on the grill and guess what? It is that time. Remember that trick I told you one time? If you can hold your hand more than five seconds, it ain't hot enough to cook nothing. Same applies on this grill when we're cooking some meat like this. So let's get them chickens out of there. They in there roosted up there. Mm, that stuff is smelling good. Oh, ain't that a wonderful sound, Big. Are you supervising? Uh, we got the chicken on there, Big. We know what time it is now, don't we? It is time for the beef. I think as Shan showed you when she zoomed in here, you can see all that good seasoning, that marinade that's got on that chicken, them garlic cloves and them adobo peppers. Mm. And that honey's got it shining like a silver dollar in a goat's butt, don't it, Shan? <laughs> People be asking me, what does that mean on some older videos? That means it's really shiny. I'm not saying go out there and try it, but it is so shiny. That's what the old men used to tell me. That's shiny in a silver dollar in a goat's butt. Have I ever seen one? No, I have not. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna shut the lid, trap some of that oak smoke in there. Gonna let them chickens probably go about four minutes on each side. That steak, three to four minutes. Now we're looking for a temperature probe and we're gonna use that chicken at about 165. But that steak, hey, y'all know me. I like it to sort of when I cook it, take it off first. So we're probably gonna do 130 to 145 along in there. If you folks like a little more over towards the medium, go more towards that 145. Me, hey, 98.6 is normal, they say, so I think that's what we ought to do. Big and Doug's little sample bite are ready to go. Hey, I need somebody to tell me if quesadillas are fit to have when they got foul in them. Boy, how many do we get a t t Oh, they're smelling beef, folks. It's in the pot. Well, it is a done deal. Now, that chicken does take longer to cook than that beef. and depends on how thin you get it with that rolling pin in there, remember. But the best way to find out temperature probe on that chicken, 165. Don't be afraid to flip it back and forth. If it's getting a little dark, move it over there to that indirect side of heat so you're not getting so hot. You gotta let them cool a little bit before you can slice them. So let's go ahead and start with this steak because he's been there. Now you remember on a New York strip, they always got that little rind of fat. I want this to be a bite of goodness in every bite. So we are gonna go ahead and trim that fat off and make it oh so good. And guess what? Guess what, Shan? Let me guess who gets those. 
be, do go ahead. Be wait for it. Now remember, you got manners. You got so many manners, and I'm proud of you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're a good puppy. You are. So if you was using skirt or flank, something like this that had a lot of coarseness, always remember to slice against that grain. Now for this New York strip, you can check this side for fat. They might be just a little right here. Just want to make sure it's all off of there. Don't think that'll go to waste because it won't because the pups will have it. And then you can just come back through here and just go to cutting. It is tender as butter. It is. That lime juice is a great natural tenderizer. It's not masking the flavor. We are enhancing and bringing out tenderness. Well, the beef is cut up. It is. Now for that chicken, we're just going to do the same thing. You can look at that. That chicken looks edible. For fowl, it does. This chicken is tender enough. We ain't going to have no trouble. And I got little help there sneaking up beside me. Well, we have got them sliced up, we have, and I want you to go to the store, or Shannon will have you a link for some homemade tortillas, but this is the Mondo size. It isn't, it. The little, little it isn't the little baby size, where if you throw them up, you can't see them no more. This is what you call a honking big tortilla. Now, a lot of folks, they just going to put the cheese on there and then put some meat on there and then fold it over. Folks, we are doing that totally different. We got to have some cheese right here to start out with, because... You ever went to bed at night and you didn't have a pillow? It don't feel right, does it? Would you hate to see this beef laying up here going to sleep without the cheese to rest his poor little head on? I sure would. So let's just lay him all in there and with a little sly right there because we're going to make half folded overs. You can just fold that over just like that, but we ain't going to, uh-uh. Because remember what happened in Shan? More cheese. We gotta have some more cheese because cheese is what holds this together and it is what's happening. And the true meaning of quesadilla is a tortilla filled with cheese. So we have done that. Except we're gonna put some meat in it. And this is the beef variety. But folks, you remember watching the grilled cheese video? And y'all seen me grate a jalapeno and put in there? Everybody thought it was magic. I like it, so we're going to have a little in this one as well. And this brings out a great colorful dish it does. Fold over. And Shan would be disappointed if we didn't get the chicken in there. So make sure you get the cheese all the way around there. And folks, today I am using a cheddar and one of them Monterey Jacks. And then we're going to finish off with what? Because we forgot to put it in here. Uh-oh. And guess what, Shan? What? When it's like this, you can just fold it over. Oh. We got to have some mozzarella because oh. what does mozzarella do? Make me happy. It makes Shan happy. <laughs> put them to sleep there. There you go. So a little mozzarella right in here. And here comes the yard bird, the fowl. Make sure it ain't got no feathers left on it. And about... One of them breasts will do two of these. Make sure you got somebody to lay on. Dookie says, man, I smell cheese and everything. <laughs> the big says, not yet, Duker, not yet. So, back with more cheese. Some mozzarella. And we got her ready to go. And guess what? More jalapeno. And you can get as little or as much as you like. And you see seeds, vein and all is in there. It's what you call kicking it up to the ladder of heat. So we're going to leave it on there just like it is. Night, night. Fold them over. Give them a little squeeze. Guess what happens now, Shan? Fire. Yeah, but I could eat them just like that. I could. <laughs> but we're going to go to the fire. So we got them over here. The grill is ready to go. I run the onion back across there again just to get it good and clean. And pardon me, but the big is finna have a bite. <laughs> I caught you, didn't so I? Close. I caught you again this week. <laughs> Folks, you need a flipping at a wrapper apparatus. Yes, that is nearly as big as what you're talking to. So Shan's got a link down there for you because we have used these so many times. Right there it goes. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be divine, it is. Well, let's take a little peek, you know, too. See that browning? You can sort of see that beginning to brown. This is where your apparatus that's big enough to turn makes a big difference. Ooh la la! 
I used to work at Pizza Hut. Mm. I'm talking, we go. Mm. I am getting ready to take me a big old muncher out of that. Mm -mm -mm. This don't take long, folks. You could do it in the house and skillet, but hey, this is gonna give you so much more flavor and it is gonna be some fine dining. Well, them come off there right pretty, they did. Good color, both sides. Mm. But I just love the sound that hash knife makes as it slips through that little tortilla. That's what I'm talking about. And look at that cheesy, steaky goodness. And mm, mm. I'm talking, this is gonna be some fine dining, boys. Y'all gonna have to wait y'all's turn. I've been thinking that is some really fine dining I do. I've been loving me a quesadilla. It didn't come from Taco Bell. No, it come from right in your own backyard. Let me have another bite of that cheesy goodness and them jalapenos is in there. That steak is oh so tender. Try the chicken. What? There's that chicken. That marinade that goes on that chicken is what makes chicken special. Ooh. <clears throat> Come here, boys. I'm letting y'all have some cheese right on the side. Get up here where I can see you. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, well, folks, that's some out there guacamole fresh out of that cowboy cookbook right there. Mm, and it is fine dining. You can use it as a dipping sauce for this or our relish or just straight sour cream or mix the relish and the sour cream together a little. Mm. Outstanding, it is outstanding. So y'all stayed with me, you did, to nearly the end, and it's time to talk about the giveaway. Now, there will be a link right down there below the video to where you click on it. You have to do two things. Click on the little deal below to enter into this. You're gonna have to sign up for our email newsletter. There we go. And you have to comment on this video as to why you would like to win this cookbook. And we're gonna leave it up there one week. Then we will go back through there, pick a winner out of the comments, and we will comment there below that, hey, you have won the big prize. And if they're already subscribed to our newsletter. They are already one step ahead. Yep. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video because me and Shan and the dogs sure enjoyed bringing it to you. We never take it for granted that y'all watch. And hey, this is about just having a good time and just enjoying life. And that's what we're doing. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans and all the first responders across the nation that are keeping this old country safe. God bless you each and every one. To you new viewers, come on in here. Let me give you a hug because we're so glad to have you. My old crowd, hey, and I don't mean old in an old way. My crowd that's been here for a while, we're nearly to that million. Help us get there. Love you all we do. Thank you so much. God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the quesadilla trail. I'll limber up first. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm pretty good now, okay? Let's be sh What was I supposed to say? <laughs> God. Mm. This all sounds so simple, don't it, Shannon? Uh huh. On this side of the camera, folks, it is not as simple as it might appear to be. Hey, 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 hey. You little heathen. His tongue is seven foot long. Okay, okay. quit eating and then... You want me to put the blooper back in there?